Each year, the Royal Canadian Air Force selects and assembles a small group of high-performing women and men to design, prepare and ultimately showcase throughout the summer air show season a special theme on one of their modernized CF-18 multi-role fighter aircraft. Commonly referred to as the Demo Hornet, it is known for being one of the most colourful and impactful flying and static displays at any air show lucky enough to have it booked. My name is Sean Costello, and today I have the pleasure of speaking with Captain Jeff Chester, lead designer for this year's theme, about the creative process and the importance of teamwork. Let's get started. Sir, can you tell us which unit you're a member of and where you're based? I'm with uh, One Canadian Air Division headquarters uh, here in Winnipeg, uh, based at 17 Wing. And uh, One Canadian Air Division is kind of the overseer for... Uh, for this as a uh, four wing where the, the airplane will be painted is one of our uh, subordinate units. And about the design for 2018, this year's theme celebrates the 60th anniversary of NORAD. Can you tell us a bit about NORAD and how this crest factored into your design? Uh, this is the crest for NORAD, the North American Aerospace Defense um, uh, Command, which is a binational agreement between the United States and Canada. Um, and this is uh, the crest that's been around as long as I can remember for uh, NORAD. And uh, this is what we've based the whole theme on. As it's a celebration of NORAD's 60th, we needed elements from the logo and from the history of NORAD uh, brought into the aircraft. And so this was kind of the starting point in terms of colors and uh, symbols. Okay, so 60 years on, there's certainly legacy and there's a story behind this crest. And, and if I understand, your challenge was to convey that onto the surfaces of uh, one of our CF-18s. That's right, yeah. Because obviously uh, CF-18 is a three-dimensional object. Uh, as a uh, painter myself, an oil painter, I'm used to working on flat surfaces. And uh, a lot of painters are used to working on murals and, and large-scale projects. But... Once you start wrapping it around the curves and bumps of an airplane, uh, things get a little bit more uh, difficult and challenging, and there are certain areas where you can and can't do uh, certain things. So that was, uh, that was a difficult part for me, was taking what I look, looked at as a 2D drawing and then wrapping that around the aircraft. Okay, uh, let's jump in to the um, artwork and uh, let's have a look. Initial design. What do we see? Uh, so there we've got the uh, the top uh, top side and the side profile views. Um, so you'll notice uh, right along the side on the uh, the fences that we've got uh, the lightning bolts taken uh, directly. So most of these elements are taken directly right out of the logo. Um, we've got the lightning bolts on the tail. There's the globe, and on the wings itself, there's something a little bit different. Um, and this, just to, to step back a, uh, a second, uh, I made about 60 different drawings for this design before uh, this was settled. Wow. And this was not solely my effort, this was a team effort. Um, Jim Beliveau, uh if people know who he is, he's designed the, uh, the, the schemes for the jet for the past, well, couple of decades, I think. And he just yeah. recently retired. Um, and so they were looking for somebody else to do it and uh, luckily just for me by happenstance uh, I had had an art show in 2014 here in Winnipeg and some of the people at the base I was you know talking about it and inviting people out and they knew that I was an artist and uh, so I was invited to do this but um, I always looked at this project as a team project I knew that I, it wouldn't be that I would submit my vision and that would be it there was the, the theme that we had to look at and we wanted to make sure that there was a lot of visual impact and it was very graphic um, so that the airplane would look good 
um, from a distance because obviously when you see it at an air show it's going to be basically the same size as you'd see it on your smartphone or whatever it'll be quite small unless you're mm -hmm. seeing it uh, as a static and then you can get up a, a little bit closer but for the majority of people it's going to be a small little airplane so it had to be very straightforward and uh, powerful and punchy um, yeah so there was a lot of people and luckily we got Jim on board as a consultant and he was uh, just a gigantic help in terms of the things, the unknown unknowns for me, the things that I never would have thought about, right? Um, all the places where you've got little sticky grip tape where the pilot's going to stand, or what's called the Lex fence, which is a little vertical piece of metal that sticks up uh, that you have to work around as well, and where things bump in and bump out, and yeah, so there's lots, lots of little considerations, and Jim uh, was invaluable there. So, so for the finish. This is all painted, none of this is vinyl, none of this is applied, right? So it all has to be uh, designed ultimately in a way that I guess would be applied in layers. So there's a construct element to this, not just the finished design, but how would you go about creating the design? That's correct, yeah, and that's also something that I was in consultation with Jim with because he's been involved in the actual painting of it uh, for all these years as well. And there's a, a whole team of paint technicians that uh, Jim's going to work with in Cold Lake and they're going to break down step by step okay how do we you know take this from this design and actually put the paint on um, on the airplane. I'm going to jump over um, to the um, VSTAB at the back we uh, see that that has the aircraft's uh, registration uh, number. That's right yeah and then uh, we've got the elements uh, to the elements again from the logo itself the sword and the globe and then I wanted to find a way to kind of tie in elements from the flags of the two countries uh, and so that's why I took that uh, half of a star and half of a maple leaf and combined those and uh, stuck them behind the sword there. Very nice. Um, final design element seems to be a removable uh, component. Can you talk to us about the luggage pod? Yeah this is the luggage pod so obviously when you see the aircraft uh, doing the actual demonstration at an air show, this won't be attached to the airplane. Uh, this is for the pilot so that uh, when he's traveling across the country or over to the UK, um, such as this year where the aircraft will be going to the UK, uh, this luggage pod will be attached so he can literally put his luggage and, uh, and items in it and take them along. Um, and this, even though the colors are very similar to the, the scheme, this is more of a tribute to a special thing that NORAD does every year at Christmas time, and that's the NORAD Trek Santa. Um, and so this is a little Santa's belt here, uh, cinching up the pod. Um, and uh, yeah, NORAD Trek Santa started back in 1955 by accident, actually. Uh, they had misprinted um, in, I think it was a newspaper, the, the phone number to call to see where Santa was, and the, the crew that was on duty that night for, for NORAD got these calls from these children and just decided to go with it and, uh, and make up locations for where they thought Santa would be at that time and I guess they enjoyed it so much that they did it the next year and then it became a tradition um, every year. In addition to your reserve force and the expertise through regular force time, you also have other skills that came to play here and that's more on the creative side and the artistic side. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about that side of your history? Sure. Um, well, I went to university, uh, University of Guelph, and actually I started out in biological science, and I was doing that for a year or so, and I took an art course as uh, an elective to kind of lighten the load. Um, and I had always liked drawing as a kid, but I never really thought of art as a career. Um, but then I really started enjoying it, and I had a couple of great teachers, and I eventually switched over into art. And, uh, and got a degree in fine art, and specializing in drawing and painting. Um, and then uh, after that, um, I taught art at uh, high school for a year, but learned pretty quickly that uh, that wasn't going to be for me for the long haul. Um, and I joined the forces at that point, but I didn't stop uh, pursuing art during that time. In fact, when I was in uh, Moose Jaw and Portage on my flight training, I actually brought my easel with me and I painted in the barracks uh, after the flying was done for the day at night time and uh, I, I was actually working on a lot of uh, old master copies at that time which is a great way to learn how to paint is by copying uh, copying the old masters. Um, That's fantastic. Yeah. 
And then when I left the, the regular forces in 2014, part of that decision was so that I could try and pursue my art career even further. And so the reserves is perfect for that because it gives me a, a stable paycheck. Uh, I get a sense of accomplishment with the reserves, but I also get the time to work on my art um, and, uh, yeah, and try and make a go of that. Where can people find some of your art? Do you show publicly or is it available online? Uh, yeah, I've shown uh, publicly. I've had a show here in uh, Winnipeg this last year, and there's a couple of paintings up around town. I have a website, um, www.jeffchester.ca, and I show with a, a couple of galleries, um, and I've had my paintings in New York, London, Stockholm, uh, all over the place. That's fantastic. In the design, if I heard correctly, you said there were something in the order of 60-some-odd designs? Uh, iterations as you went along. What can you tell me about uh, what it takes to, I guess, uh, improve on a, a piece of work and or work through something and, and remain energized and optimistic about uh, moving forward on it? You know, I think that's just part of the creative process. Um, anytime I do a painting, there's always a point uh, about halfway through where I think this is not going well. I don't, I, maybe I forgot everything I know about painting and uh, I don't know how I'm going to finish this painting. And it happens every single time and I tell myself at that point, hey, this happens every time. Maybe you should just keep working at it and you'll get to the end. And uh, I do, but it, it still feels real every time. It's, a, it's always a little bit of a struggle. I just think that's just the way it works with, uh, with creativity. And I try never to settle just on my first idea. It's easy to jot something down in a sketchbook and think, yeah, that looks pretty good. But you, if you find that you can push yourself to keep trying new things, then you might come up with something better. You might, you might go back to your initial idea as well. But uh, yeah, it's just part of the creative process. You're going to make mistakes and you just try and fix them and just try and move ahead. That, I think, is um, experience speaking. Uh, I think that's, uh, I just heard a lot of experience uh, come down in that. That you have a strategy to manage a known uh, development in your uh, creative cycle. You know there's going to come a time that perhaps um, inner demons start saying, uh, and, and you just uh, step up and uh, put them in their place and carry on. Yeah, and it's, it's good to have a, a confidant as well with that. My wife is uh, well aware, and she knows every time I say, oh, this, this painting is not going well, she reminds me as well. Okay. Uh, sir, it's been a real pleasure to have uh, your company today and to help uh, explain to us what's behind uh, this year's design. It's the 60th anniversary. We're going to see this uh, demo jet come out of the paint booth. It will be uh, flown over Canada, over the United States, but it's also, as you mentioned, going to the UK. So you're going to get a lot of visibility on this. And I hope that on more than one occasion, you'll get to see your design flying in the skies above yourself. Yeah, thanks very much, Sean. Thanks for having me, and uh, thanks for your interest in, uh, in this design. Outstanding. I will uh, be back with updates for others. We're going to provide some coverage during the uh, spring training, and we'll also be checking in with Porcelain, the pilot for the demonstration jet, a little later. It's Sean Costello signing off. Thank you very much for joining us today. We'll see you again soon.